so yeah, the, I mean, the currency stuff, I don't know, but when it comes to uh, Boeing, which is the stock you're mentioning here, um, Boeing, for those of you who don't know who they are, uh, let me pull it up on this chart here. So Boeing. Who is... doesn't know what Boeing is? <laughs> of course, everybody knows <laughs> what Boeing is. Right. They make airplanes. Right. They make airplanes, yes. So Boeing makes airplanes and uh, they make, you know, your jumbo jets, et cetera. Um, probably the most famous airline, you know, plane builder in the world let's just put it that way everyone knows boeing 747s and stuff like that back in the day all right so boeing stock has been let's just say it's not done so well um since the pandemic starts so if you look here on my screen you can see this big drop here was the as i call it, the pandemic sell-off then we had a rebound things kind of came back and then they start to slump again so now we're getting close to the lows that we saw before but we had some good news uh yesterday yesterday it came out i'm just reading my notes here uh that boeing had delivered 121 jets um in the second quarter of this year they delivered 95 in the first quarter so the market seems to have liked that and they basically moved the stock up about eight percent um i think they said eight percent it couldn't have been eight percent it was something you know it can't be 8%. It must be less than that. But anyway, the the stock may have been up 8%. I'm not sure. I have to look at my notes, but it was up a lot. All right. So today it's down 2.49%. Um, slumping. It might have been up 8%. I'm looking at the dailies, and that bar is like four times bigger than the dailies. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, I was like, man, was it really up that much? Yeah. I guess it was. Um, yeah. I guess it was up 8%. So obviously a pretty big move, but now, um, uh, a lot of people ask about that. I'll I'll do that in the analysis. But a lot of people asked me about this yesterday. What do I think is going to happen next with it? And um, you know, I guess maybe we can go over that here. Yeah, why not? So Boeing. Well, well before we do that, the, yeah. like to the to anybody watching for the first time, right? The first thing you're going to draw your eyes to are those those four little, uh, you know, analysis bars, right, to the top left. Um, so we got a green, a yellow, a yellow, and a yellow, and so. That's a good setup. So, Mike, what does all of that mean? Well, it's okay setup. I, I, I want to call it a good one, but I, you're, you're, okay. so we have green for technical on the chart. Okay, so green means that on the chart is trending one. Well. If you're looking at the chart, you might be saying, "Well, no, it's not. It's been going down." But this green here doesn't look at the uh, long term; it only looks at the short term. It looks at the last twenty days, basically, and this is what the last twenty days look like. It's definitely up, right? So, Boeing going up. That's what gave it the green score. But the yellow basically means, folks, that the stock is neither hot nor cold. It's just lukewarm. So they have lukewarm. Bottom, The bottom box is fundamentals. Lukewarm numbers as far as their business, their income, their revenue. Lukewarm in terms of valuation. Valuation just means how much the stock is worth in comparison to what the company is able to generate as far as profits, revenue, things like that. Um, so investors always compare these numbers to make us to make a judgment call of whether or not the price of a stock makes sense for the amount of money, the amount of profits, whatever the company's generating. And then and that's also mid levels, not hot, not cold. We have institutional activity, the circle, uh, which is showing that big buyers and big sellers, they're fairly evenly matched. So no net difference in buying or selling activity that we can see. Um, so in short, Boeing is on cruise control essentially for the bottom three, but for the chart, it's actually on a trend. So we can exploit this, but this brings up the, uh, the analysis. So looking at Boeing, I'm going to go to a, uh, um, let me just go to a three month view. So here's Boeing on a three month chart. And as you can see, it is starting to go up over here. It's been going up since there, but it is starting to look like it's trending up. I do think this has potential for a trend um, to the upside going forwards, but it's all going to come down to fundamentals. And if the fundamentals are not improving, then it's not likely the stock's going to trend up at all. Well, the news you got yesterday, right? Doesn't that kind of help? That's not even it, into the chart in the data true. yet. That's true. It does help. What I'm waiting to see is if that's a signal of something more, right? In other words, they got more deliveries. That's great. But does that mean the company is 
really on a good financial track right now? Does that mean they're really improving their bottom line? Because remember, we have a lot of uncertainty out there as far as demand for airlines. I mean, we know that a lot of people are booking flights, but at the same time, demand to buy new jets, um, you know, with all the stuff going on in the world, you know, economy slowing down, et cetera, is not really the best environment to expect large demand for, for orders of airplanes. Um, to say the least. So that's what I'm just saying. Like there would have that to be sense. something that makes a lot more of uh, going on. So looking at the fundamental picture, I can say this, and this is the part I want to point out based upon the numbers. These are the earnings numbers for Boeing. So the, uh, so for folks who are not familiar with this, each of these rectangles, these histograms, they represent the earnings. The rectangle in the background represents the expect the expected earnings result. If it's pointing down in red, it's ne- or, or brownish color. It's that means it's a negative expected outcome. The line in the middle represents the actual. So where I'm highlighting here, it's kind of hard to see, guys, but I'll just read it to you. For that earnings uh, for June 2020 report uh, for reporting for the June 2020 uh, quarter, which is Q2, um, we had an estimate of a, a loss of two dollars and ninety three cents a share but the actual was $4.79 loss. So it's greater of a loss than expected. But what we want to look at is, as we go forwards in time, we've had some really bad surprises. Like, in other words, uh, this is this is one of the few stocks that I've seen over the years that can have these really massive surprises on earnings. But um, the last few, they look like they're improving. We're, we're gradually moving up towards positive territory. But we're not quite there yet. Uh, if I look at the metrics, sales growth is not up; it's down. Um, net income is actually well; it looks like it might have slightly improved, um, you know, from the previous reading. But not really seeing great numbers over here, and that's why it's it's lukewarm on their overall rating. But the analysts do think that this stock is going to be worth a lot more. So still, and these are all recent ratings. So basically, the average is about 224. A lot of a lot of companies actually changed their estimates uh, yesterday. Most of them actually downgraded the stock slightly, but not a lot. And they did say they're still bullish on it. So if you want to buy Boeing, I would say right now I agree with you. This is probably a good time if you're an investor with a long term um, perspective. This probably is a fair price, is all I'm saying. 150 a share is the estimated uh, lowest price target. We're actually trading below it. So that's one of the things that makes me worried because if it's trading below the lowest estimate, that begs the question, so what's going on here? Why, why is the market not agreeing that this stock is worth more? So if you really like Boeing, uh, if you're willing to invest into it, I would say Probably you could get this now at the, probably one of the better prices you're going to find. If it does keep trending up, you know, then obviously we have some momentum there and then perhaps it can go up to eventually get into one of these targets. So looks like a decent buy um, if you have a longer term perspective. But in the short term, I would say this one's going to be a little iffy. Um, you know, even after that good news yesterday, stock is still down, but so is the rest of the market. So I guess that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, so if we, I, if if there's a little bit of a pullback, 140, 135, 130, 125, uh, might might have some opportunity there. Um, but yep. Uh, I, oh, one last thing before we go on, what's the institutional like? What's the institutional money looking like? Because I know we usually like to touch on that to help True. gauge uh, what's happening. Money flow currently is negative, uh, so we have a net more selling than buying. Um, even including yesterday, um, ownership is up 1.21%, uh, for institutions. This is a stock that's 50.6% institutionally owned, um, which means that it's not, Boeing is not a crowd favorite for the investment world. Um, you know, 50% is, is a good number, but a lot of stocks have the same number. So that's not really that impressive. If it was like 80%, 70% institutionally owned, I would say, wow. This probably is a, a good stock, <laughs> but that's not what we're seeing. Um, it's in three fewer top tens, uh, 91 more sellers, 113 fewer buyers. But 
the overall amount of shares owned by institutions is still up 1.21%. Um, I don't want to count insiders because they're only 0.67% of the company. Um, unless they were all selling at once, that might be a sign that something's wrong. But other than that, um, doesn't look like that's that big of a deal. So not seeing any strong numbers looks kind of uh, mediocre to me. And um, the only thing that I would definitely point out about Boeing is that um, unless we start to see some more buying coming in, obviously the stock can't go up. We need those buyers. We're not seeing them right now. But um, for those of you who want to time the entry, which I would recommend, wait for those buyers that show up here. The money flow goes positive. That's where you want to start to jump. Because this will go positive first, and then after that, we'll see who's the buyer because they have to report it after they've done it, but they don't report it the same day. It'll be usually a few days before you know what institutions were buying. So if we see the money flow strongly go positive, that's where I would strike. In the meantime, all we're seeing right now on the chart is a temp uh, we, we are seeing move up. But as I mentioned, I'm not sure if this is going to convert into a longer term trend. So for now, I would be very cautious about parking money unless you really want to hold for a long time.